I had an epiphany. Strictly speaking, it was forced upon me by a newly minted first class graduate in philosophy. You can't innovate alone, so you keep talking. You talk to everyone, and rest assured that you will never stop learning and that new ideas will arrive from unexpected directions. This philosophy graduate was helping me to dig a deep hole in my back garden, as some landscaping was required. We each took turns in the hole whilst the other caught his breath. While each rested, we would contribute to the unfolding discussion whilst the other laboured. Naturally, the topic turned to philosophy, and it struck me that this young man, who dug a hole ever deeper into my garden, was now likely to be adept at logical deduction. Perhaps an understanding of logic could offer some expertise and innovation, particularly as my own specialism focuses upon those contradictions to be found in design. To test this assumption, I offered an example of a technical contradiction one might encounter in a design exercise. Perhaps one might desire high speed, but also great safety from a system, and these obviously contradict. After only a moment's thought, this young philosopher responded from the hole in my garden. No, they don't. Adding insult to injury, he confirmed his position. These desires do not present a logical contradiction. The digging sounds continued. This comment set me back. Of course these desires contradict. The faster we go, the more peril we may face. The faster we go, the more kinetic energy we must carefully shed should our progress become uncontrolled. A technical contradiction. A classic contradiction. No, it isn't, my philosophical colleague maintained, hefting another spadeful of earth to the surface. The contradiction is only introduced by the solution that you are assuming, he adds. In other situations, these desires may actually support one another. It's important to keep an open mind, particularly when someone is demolishing your worldview. I had to admit, he had a point. It's not hard to think of situations in which one becomes more safe the faster you travel. Situations in which peril are avoided by speed. In my model, I'm moving at breakneck speed in a vehicle of some description. The faster we go, the less safe we become. However, we might instead be running from a vicious man-eating lion. In this situation, the faster we move, the safer we become. Speed and safety only contradict if the context imposes this contradiction. Contradiction is found not in our desire to enjoy both benefits simultaneously, but between those physical devices that provide each function. This young man climbed from the deep hole that he had dug for me, pleased with his efforts. With this new perspective in mind, it was not difficult to think of other examples. Consider the movie The Italian Job. A gold heist is to be performed in the middle of an Italian city. A large quantity of heavy and very stolen gold must be quickly transported from a crowded city centre to the outskirts whilst evading law enforcement. To transport this cargo through this environment will demand a very special vehicle. This vehicle must fit through narrow streets. The vehicle must also prevent us from being caught by the police. And finally, this vehicle must be able to transport a great weight of gold. To provide all of these desires, perhaps we can trade features of our solution to provide such a vehicle. A vehicle that must be able to traverse narrow city streets, must be able to carry a large weight of gold over a variety of terrain that will punish suspension and chassis, whilst also able to evade police. These desires may be offered by a vehicle that is small enough to fit through the streets, strong enough to carry the gold, and fast enough to evade the police. Three physical properties offer solutions. A fast, powerful but small vehicle may be offered by some simple trades between these solutions. This vehicle may be fast enough to evade the police, small enough to fit through the streets, and strong enough to carry the spoils. With this vehicle available, the apparent contradiction between our desires may not be logical contradictions at all. These are the engineering trades we must make, and the manner in which we trade is dependent upon how these benefits are delivered. With the correct solution, perhaps the practical delivery of these benefits don't contradict at all, but simply demand a compromise. Fast enough, small enough, strong enough. However, in a system design exercise in which trades between our desires are to be made, it's possible that the required solution will stray beyond the benefits that can be offered by a compromise between practical mechanisms. Perhaps there is no vehicle small enough, fast enough or strong enough to carry the great mass of gold we have stolen. Perhaps there is no vehicle that can resolve this task at all. We must then consider alternative methods to deliver the desired benefits beyond a balance of needs. When we must, perhaps only then should we dip into the philosopher's toolkit. 
it. Perhaps now we must resolve some logical contradiction between the solutions of fast, small and strong to offer all of the desires that we seek. Escape from the police, traverse narrow streets, carry a heavy load. After all, the practical solutions of fast, small and strong may contradict one another, but these are not the only solutions. If our vehicle must both evade the police but also traverse narrow streets and a trade between fast but also small will not suffice, now we must choose one of these features and impose a logical contradiction upon the other. We might choose a fast vehicle and now this fast vehicle must traverse the narrow streets but not traverse the narrow streets. Perhaps we could choose another dimension and find a fast vehicle that can fly above those streets. We might instead choose a small vehicle and now must evade the police but not evade the police. Perhaps a colour change might make us seem like an unlikely vehicle in which to make a getaway with stolen gold. What about an ice cream van? Just sitting there, not really escaping at all, surrounded by police, but overlooked as a suspect. If our vehicle must traverse the narrow streets, but also carry all of the gold, and a trade-off of small but strong will not suffice, now we must choose one of these features and impose a logical contradiction. We might choose the strongest means to lift our gold that we can find, and now the vehicle must traverse the narrow streets, but not traverse the narrow streets. Why not engage in a periodic action to lift the gold out of those narrow streets with a series of construction cranes that reach over the city? Instead, we might choose a small vehicle, and now the vehicle must carry all of the gold but not carry all of the gold. In what way can a vehicle that is very small and therefore very weak also carry all the gold? We can resolve this logical contradiction through segmentation by breaking our load into smaller, lighter pieces. The smallest of vehicles might be a single person. Why not avoid those streets altogether by recognising that the buildings are porous materials? Avoid the street altogether and carry all the gold through the buildings by hand, brick by brick. If our vehicle must both evade the police but also carry all of the gold and a trade between fast but strong will not suffice, now we must choose one of these features and impose a logical contradiction. We might choose a strong vehicle and now we must evade the police but not evade the police. In what way can a strong heavy vehicle remain ahead of the police? Merging? Make the gold a part of the vehicle and hide it from the police as Goldfinger did. Then we might drive slowly through the streets, remaining one step ahead of the police as we crawl along. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off! We might instead choose a fast vehicle, and now the vehicle must carry all of the gold, but not carry all of the gold. We can resolve this logical contradiction again through segmentation by breaking our load into smaller, lighter pieces. If we then copy this fast vehicle, we distribute this load between multiple fast vehicles and each will not carry all of the gold, and yet all of the gold is carried. Now we make our escape. And breaking the gold heist into many loads and carrying each in our original choice of vehicle offers us once more a small, fast vehicle able to carry a small portion of the overall spoils. We present three desires, we discover that the practical instantiation of these three desires cannot offer a solution fast enough, small enough, nor strong enough to transport the gold, and so our practical solution presents a contradiction, not our desires. We create logical contradictions from this observation. Evade the police, but do not evade the police. Traverse the narrow streets, but do not traverse the narrow streets. Carry all of the gold, but do not carry all of the gold. The separation of these contradictions present multiple new solutions, from which we can select the most practical. In the Italian job, Charlie Crocker chooses a small, fast, vehicle but copied and multiplied. Once these thieves have evaded the police through the narrow streets, the whole load is once more consolidated into one large hoard to be transported to safety using another compromise, a large enough vehicle that can carry the whole load and the crew along reasonably wide roads at a moderate speed. Once more an engineering trade is employed to offer a practical compromise between our desires, a bus that delivers a careful balance of size, strength and speed. Once escaped from the narrow winding streets of the city and from law and Enforcement, we must transport the gold and remain on the road. Do these desires contradict? Whilst all is going well, transporting the gold and remaining on the road present no particular conflict. We can have both. These desires only come into contradiction when the solutions we employ come into conflict. The road is too narrow, too winding and we are moving too fast. The vehicle is too heavy and too long to move so fast along such a narrow road. A new situation once more results in an unreconcilable compromise. To reach the gold we must unbalance our stricken bus. To escape from certain death we must abandon the gold. How can our methodology help us now? How can this new contradiction be reconciled? Hang on a minute lads. I've got a great idea. 
Michael Caine himself offered a solution at the release of this movie. He listed his resources. Bus, crew, gold, cliff. List the subcomponents. The vehicle has a chassis. Wheels, doors, windows, engine, fuel. Fuel? The fuel tank on a Harrington Legionnaire bus seems to be found at the back. I guess it holds a couple of hundred kilograms of fuel. If a full tank is employed to make an escape, a weight in fuel of two grown men is potentially hanging from the back of that bus. If our contradiction hanging from this cliff remains perfectly balanced with a full tank of fuel, we could run the engine until we have half a tank of fuel. With this weight discarded, the balance is restored in favour of remaining on the road, and the contradiction is resolved. Charlie Crocker should now be able to walk to the end of the bus and retrieve a gold bar. Keep doing that and the situation is improved further with every Every bar recovered, and eventually many tons of gold will reside at the front of the bus. Will this be sufficient to ground the front wheels and pull the bus from the cliff? Maybe, maybe not. However, as all of this gold is probably much heavier than the crew, they can at least disembark in safety. Once they disembark, they can find some other means to drag the bus back onto the road. If they can, they are on their way. Otherwise, they can once more look to the super system for resources, and replace the gold brick by brick with rocks, rock by rock. Now they have a whole new problem, as they are stuck at the side of the road with a huge pile of stolen gold. There's probably another movie in that. Small, fast, strong, on the road, rich as kings. It's not our desires that contradict. We may indeed be able to achieve everything that we want. It's the situation we are in and how we realise these desires that create the conflict. It's the scrutiny of the logical contradiction and the alternatives that result that may resolve each. And the lesson to be learned from this tale? If you are inclined to philosophical thoughts and motivated to upset the worldview of irascible engineers who have devoted their lives to understanding a topic, let this story act as a warning. For once that deep hole had been dug in my garden, that young philosopher was never, ever seen again.